him, Charlie. Yeah, he sure handled it for us, too, didn't he? <laughs> Catch up with a wagon master named Christopher Hale. Now uh, you caught him. What can I do for you? Are uh, you Christopher Hale? Have been for many years. I'm Saul Bevins. It's my sister Martha, my son Joe, my dog Duchess. Well, I'm glad to know you. We're, we're heading for Sacramento. I don't mind saying, Mr. Bevins, I've seen a lot of fancy driving in my time, but none like I saw just now. <laughs> you mean that's pretty good for a blind man? Pretty good for anybody. We want to join your train. Well, let's talk about it. We're about to circle up. This is the lead wagon right here on your left. Pull in behind it. Okay. All right, circle up, Charlie. Okay. Right. So, suppose they won't take us either. Then we'll just have to wait till the next train. Mr. Hale, there'll be no hard feelings if you turn us down. That's no more than six other trains have done. Mr. Bevins, just how did you figure to drive four horses clear to California? Well, you saw me drive them, didn't you? Well, there's more than just an empty field to cross between here and the Pacific. My brother can handle horses in a wagon better than most men. There's one place on our trail where we go alongside a precipice with a 500-foot drop straight down. Another place your outside wheels are only a couple of feet away from a rushing river. <laughs> I'll make it, but you better be careful. Oh? Yes. You see, you only have two eyes. I have six eyes. My sister Martha's, and Job's, and Duchess. Mr. Barrett, what made you decide to drive a wagon way? It was a problem of economics. I have a wagon full of household goods, medical supplies, and books. It would be very expensive to try to transport them any other way. I'm uh, hoping to uh, start a school for the blind in Sacramento. Well, it's not easy to refuse you. Uh, frankly, I, I'm hoping that you find it impossible. But I'm afraid I'll have to think it over. Saul could be of great service to your train. Uh, Martha, that's he won't ever tell, but my brother is a doctor, Mr. Hale. A doctor? You were a doctor before you lost your sight? No, I, I lost my sight when I was three years of age. I didn't realize. You didn't realize that a blind man could be a doctor? <laughs> I got my degree in Paris five years ago. He's already brought more than a dozen babies into the world. Martha, no. Well, you won't ever say anything in your own behalf. I don't have to because you say it all for me. You're obviously a remarkable man. It makes it difficult to know just what to do. So, you're going to turn us down like all the others? Oh, there's no use crying until he does. How far along are we now? About halfway. Halfway? The train must be much bigger than I realized. Biggest train I've ever seen. Pa? Yeah? The train we was waiting for. 
the right one. I can feel it. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Just don't set your heart on it. Remember, we have been disappointed too many times before. Yeah, but every time we've been turned down, you said it was because it wasn't the right one. You said, when the right train comes along, they take us. When the right train comes along, they will. No. This is the right one. Mm -hmm. Now, you just do me a favor. You just look out there and tell me what you can see. Just the knife. Just the knife, huh? God gave you two great, big, wonderful, wide-open eyes, and all you can say is, just the knife. There's a soft hooded silhouette of the wagon. And beyond them, the trees looking like black lace against the sky. Overhead, the stars seem brighter and closer than they'd ever been before. With a wisp of a moon balanced tentatively in front of them. Can't see where the land ends or the sky begins. Thank you. You helped me see it. My name's Jane Harley. How do you do? My name is Saul Bev, and this is my son, Jim. How do you do? Are you going west with us? We hope we're going west, but right now we're, uh, well, we're waiting for the verdict. Good luck. Thank you. All we want is a straight answer, Mr. Hale. Are you taking on that blind man? I haven't quite decided yet. I think some opinion should be heard first. I'd be glad to hear your opinion. The articles under which we signed on clearly stated that any matter relating to the welfare of the community should be voted upon by the entire train. Well, taking on one wagon hardly affects the welfare of the entire train. In this case, it does. How can a blind man drive a wagon clear to California? How can he do his share of the work and stand guard? How can he even defend himself in case of Indian attack? Why, he'll be a public charge. We've got enough to worry about just getting ourselves to California. Not that I'm not sorry for him, mind you, but... Man's inhumanity to man. Fine night, Jokey. For all the sweet smells of the summer night. Flowers. And grass. Cooking. Leather. Grain. And canvas. Pop, why do you always smell more than me? <laughs> because I see through my nose, that's why. Job, come on. Bedtime. Say good night to your pa. Good night, pa. Good night, Jody. Martha, this is a train. This is a train. <laughs> well, good, good. <laughs> Evening, Mr. Hale. <laughs> Good evening. Well, Mr. Bevins, I've been trying to decide what to do about you. I'm sorry if I made things awkward for you. I'd like to help you. Because I'm blind? Well, naturally, that's one of the reasons. No, no, no. You have to accept me or turn me down just like any other man. How can I? Mr. Hale, I can see more through my fingertips than you may ever see. My ears tell me more about what's happening in the distance than if you had the best two eyes in the world. I have
a high school diploma, I have a college degree, and I have a certificate from the School of the Blind. And I am a qualified human being. That goes without saying. Oh, no, no. No, it doesn't. That's just the point. The terrible thing about being blind is not the world of the darkness that we live in. It's the darkness of those around us. You wouldn't accept us as equals. You put us in a world apart. We have our sight. Our cross is not being blind. It is the stubborn blindness of those who can see. Well, Mr. Bevins, you must be aware that your condition poses certain problems. Some people are bound to be worried. <laughs> Evidently. So far, every wagon train has turned me down. All right. I'll make a bargain with you. I'm willing to find out if you can take care of yourself. I'll take you as far as the next settlement. That's about 200 miles. And when we get there, I'll let the people on the train vote on whether you're going on with us. And you must abide by their decision. That's agreed. That's agreed. And I accept the challenge. And it's settled. You outdid yourself tonight, Charlie. You know, Charlie's stews are always a mystery to me. He never says what's in them. A good cook never gives out his secrets, you know. Mr. Babbins, what would you say is in a stew? Nobody knows what's in a stew. I would say there's little carrots, potatoes, wild onions, and meat, and that's all. And then there's a little uh, boiled roots. Boiled roots? Just to give it body. And then buffalo meat, prairie dog. Prairie dog? You sure about that? Yeah. Charlie, can't we trust you for a minute? Now, where would I get prairie dog? We passed the whole village of them yesterday. Oh, wait a minute. There's just a little dash of raccoon. Oh, not again. You wouldn't have known if Mr. Bevins wasn't just a big blabbermouth. <laughs> well, I still think it's delicious, Charles. Me too. It's always dangerous to inquire into a stew. I'm afraid so. Charlie, I know. Take it out and bury it. And fast. Before you do, I'll have a little more, all right, Charlie? Thank Me you. too. Thank you. Avenue 
of the reverse of Ava, which, like this old, ugly, and venomous, wears yet a precious jewel in his head. And this our life, exempt from public haunt, finds tongues in trees, books in the running brook, sermons in stone, and good in everything. Jane, why do you have such a, an aura of sadness about you? I don't really know. Is it because you're unfulfilled? I suppose that must be it. Well, you'll change when the right man comes along. Is there a right man for everyone? That is the prevalent belief, yes. I don't accept it. I don't believe some immortal Cupid lays out paths and arrows to guide us to one another. Well, you're young and you're lovely and you'll change. I'm not young. I'm almost 30. And I'm far from lovely. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait now. I think you're lovely, and love will come to you. But you must have faith, faith, and it will come. Has it came to you? Oh, has it come to those most blessed by providence, huh? soft. He doesn't know when to say no. Don't you believe in giving a person a chance, Harley? Why does everybody persist in making me the villain? I can't help it if the man's blind, can I? You can't help anything or anybody, Mr. Harley. There was no denying Saul Bevins had a way with it. Before long, he knew more people by their first names than I did. He was hungry for friendship. I don't think it ever occurred to him that he'd also have enemies. How much longer are we gonna have to wait for it, Paul? Uh, just take it easy, boy. You ain't got no place to go anyhow. I could have gone to that social. You ain't got no time for socials. You gotta think of making a living. What makes you so sure that blind man's got money? 
instinct, boy. I can smell out money like a man with a divining rod can smell out water. I ain't lived all these years without learning a few tricks. We'll get that money and be gone before Bevis knows what he did. checking me out, folks. Seems kind of quiet now. Yeah. There's that Miss Harley again. She don't get much sleep. Charlie, you worry too much about other people's business. I don't have any of my own. Some mighty big thoughts, Miss Harley. I was thinking how little of life most of us really see. Compared to what a blind man sees. Oh, you won't make him leave the train, will you, Mr. Hale? How do you know that's up to the train? Well, he hasn't been any trouble. On the contrary. I agree. On the contrary. Steady. Steady girl. 
dari itu dari na Finishes that. You just stay there. You rest a little now. Easy now. I'll just take a look around. You go to sleep now, Job. Where's Pa? He's out visiting. Isn't it too late for visiting? You know your Pa when he gets to talking. Duchess isn't here either. Well, Duchess always goes with your Pa, you know that. And you go to sleep. Something's wrong, Aunt Martha. I know it is. Go to sleep, Job. That's what your pa would want. Good night, Aunt Martha. Good night, darling. you, Miss Babin? Oh. Oh, it's you, Mr. Hale. You startled me. <laughs> it's a little late to be outside the wagon circle. Yes. Well, uh, Saul forgot to get the water, and I didn't want to waken him. Hmm. Not like Saul to forget anything, is it? No. No, he doesn't allow himself any human frailties. I think the most important thing in the world to him is to prove that a blind man isn't helpless and that he's replaced his eyes with other skills. He's a brave man. My brother's a very brilliant man, Mr. Hale. He graduated magna cum laude. And yet people, most people, treat him like a senseless child. But he never acknowledges it. To me, he's like a man riding at the head of a great crusade fighting for the blind everywhere. I think your brother will win his fight. He mustn't lose. He can't. Here, let me get that. Oh, thank you. He 
you seem troubled tonight, Miss Martha. Oh. Is there anything you want to tell me? No. But thank you for your kindness, Mr. Hale. For I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. <laughs> hear you. Where is he? You mustn't say a word about your pa being gone. Wh if anyone asks, you must say that he's resting. Why? Why? Because if they find out he's gone, they'll send out hunting parties, and they'll hold up the train, and they'll say they had to do it because your pa is blind. I don't care. I don't care. Job, your pa cares. You know how much he cares. I want my pa, I want my pa. Listen to me, Job. Now, you and I know better than anyone how wise your pa is. But if we don't believe, and if we don't show, we believe he can take care of himself. How can we expect anyone else to believe it? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, he, he doesn't feel very well this morning. Oh, well, maybe I better have a look at him. Well, I really don't think he should be disturbed. He's sleeping. Well, I have some things to attend to down the line, but when I come back, I want to see Saul. Well, how, how, how long will it be before we roll? About one hour.
Take a look at Saul now. If he's asleep, I won't wake him. Oh, please don't go in there. I just can't leave a blind man out there alone to fend for himself. Please don't send a searching party. I'd send a searching party if Saul had perfect eyes. Saul always says a man who can see doesn't have to prove anything. Well, he, he's not going to prove anything by dying. He isn't going to die. He's going to live. And he's going to prove that he can take care of himself and that he doesn't have to be protected and watched. But he must have that chance, Mr. Hale. Please let him have that chance.
of sight usually knows what his enemy looks like. Saul Bevins had to rely on his nose, his ears, his hands, and his faith in a friend. I was minding my own business, and he attacked me. You tried to jump me into Warhol. You are a liar. I never came near you. You gonna take the word of a blind man? What about witnesses? Maybe somebody saw this. Yeah, a man's entitled to witnesses. You can't condemn my son and me on the word of a blind man. My word's as good as his. Better. There's two of us. Anyone see this? They were both there, I tell you. I know it. They were both there. All right, Lloyd, maybe you got away with something this time. But don't you ever let me hear anything about you and Jed again. You can't talk to us like He's this. telling you, mister. This isn't the first time you two have been in trouble, but it better be the last. Now get back to your wagon. Everybody. I'll get something for that cut, so. Thank you, Martin. I'm sorry, Saul, but I can't do anything about it. No one saw it. You've got no proof. I don't want any sympathy, Chris. You want to be like other men, and you're going to have enemies like other men. But I'll tell you one thing. You've shown you're not an easy mark. Anyone will think twice before he tangles with you again. Chris, you trying to tell me I won a battle? I certainly am. Thank you. Miss Bevins, hmm? he isn't hurt, is he? No, Jane, just a cut on his forehead. Will you fix it for him? So. <laughs> I guess I did, didn't I? You know, all last night I had the, the strangest feeling you were in danger. I, I didn't sleep until almost morning, but when I did, I, I, I dreamt that I was following you, trying to warn you of something. I, did, I didn't know what it was. I was so relieved to see you alive and well this morning. Seems a little foolish now. Yes, it does, I guess. Jane, you're very warm and a very sensitive young lady, and you're much too wise to allow yourself to get emotionally involved with other people's problems. It was only a dream, so. Don't follow a blind man. Even in a dream.
Saul Bevins was proving what he'd set out to prove. He'd survived the trials of the forest, he'd fought the good fight against his enemies, he'd made friends. But he'd lost an air of happiness he'd brought with him. What's on your mind? Well, I've been trying to think of a way to ask something that's none of my business. We've been friends. <laughs> ask away. All right. Jane Harley. Well, what about her? I never see you two together anymore. Been very busy lately. You can't see the look in her eyes, but I can. Why are you doing this, Saul? Why? Because I suddenly realize that it's not good for a man and woman to see too much of each other if nothing can come of it. Why do you say nothing can come of it? Because you're blind? Suppose I said I... I, I don't care for her. I can see the look on your face, too. Then I should be younger. You're not old? All right, then we should have met years ago. How long? Ten years? What made you say that? Job's ten, isn't it? That's right, so what? You just still can't forget his mother, is that it? What happened to her? She died. She was killed in the saloon brawl in St. Louis. The sheriff sent me the details. Seems she was with a gambler that got a little careless with the cards and... The gentleman got under the table in time and she didn't. <laughs> There's a story I never meant to tell again. You can't keep your whole life locked inside you. It wasn't her fault. She was a child. She was 16. You can't expect her to go through the rest of her life saddled with the man that she has to lead by the hand. Now, if there's anybody's fault, it was mine. I had to believe what I wanted to believe, that I was as good as any other man. But she tried to stick it out. She tried, but then she had me to look after, and by the time she was 17, it was Job. When I married her, she was bright and gay. And then gradually she grew still and quiet, a prisoner in my dark. After a while, she just ran away from it. Now, Chris, if anybody's to blame, it's me. We can't change what's past. No? We can learn from it. I will never take another woman into my darkness. Saul, so, do you think you have the right to decide for someone else? Chris, don't you think I'd give my soul for Jane? Marion. And destroy her? No. Happiness isn't going to destroy it. But living with a blind man will. Now, Saul, you told me you were an able human being, and you did brave things to prove it. You faced a mountain lion. You faced men you couldn't see, and you fought them. You did all the ordinary things. You cooked meals. You packed and unpacked wagons. You hitched up an unhitched team, drove them. And you did all this, you said, because you wanted to be accepted as a man. Like any other man. That's right. 
people, don't you see, Saul? You're only going through the motions of living. You're not living. If you can't cope with love, you can't cope with life. I will not put a woman through that again. You say you won't put a woman through it, but it sounds more like you won't go through it yourself. Don't let your blindness be an excuse. You mean, don't let my blindness be an excuse? You failed at marriage. That's unfortunate, but you're not the first and you won't be the last. Admit you failed. Thank the Almighty for sending you someone else. Try again, like any other human being. That's what I've been doing. You know, I've been living my life afraid to admit that I failed. Yes, you have. Stay here. No sign of a fire. I know there is no sign, but there will be. Now we have to row. Are you sure? I, I swear I'm sure I can smell it. And besides that, the wind is traveling in our direction.
been even one hour later last night. We'd never admit it. Your eyes certainly saw more than mine. Mr. Bevins, I reckon some of us owe you an apology. Me especially. That's all right. You can forget it, Mr. Harley. And how this train's ever going to repay you, we might have lost everything. How about it, folks? Should we take that vote now, whether Mr. Bevins goes with us? What do you say, folks? Let's make it unanimous.